Welcome back, everybody. The History Guy here, ready to press ahead with the uh, Confederate Campaign Ultimate General Civil War. This is legendary mode, the highest difficulty that you can have, and we are on to the Battle of Chantilly. And uh, I'll talk a little bit about the battle as we go along here, but just want to talk briefly about my army makeup. You take 13 brigades into this battle. Uh, so I have gone ahead and renamed uh, some brigades after uh, what was requested by the patrons. I've got the Hampton Legion here, Snakefoot Brigade here. Uh, I do also have two more. I've got the Paper Collar Brigade here and O'Hare's Ohio Outlaws, though neither of them will be participating in this battle. Uh, I've just chosen to go with the larger of my two-star units at the moment. I don't want to put a ton of money into trying to get those other ones back up. So you can see now I've got my uh, max brigade size up to 2,500 soldiers. I am taking some artillery into this one as well. A couple of units of militia, as I explained in the last episode, I'm naming any uh, unit that's one star and has farmer uh, muskets as militia just so I can easily identify them on the battlefield. So let's go ahead and dive into Chantilly. Uh, this was fought on September 1st, 1862. It was the day after the conclusion of the uh, battle, of second, the second battle of Bull Run. And uh, just real quick looking at this, I've got 25,000 men, 36 guns to his 26 and 48. So pretty evenly matched to go into this one. This was a battle um, this was, like I said, a follow-up to the Second Battle of Bull Run. And what happened was Pope, uh, the commander of the Army of Virginia, the Union Army of Virginia, after the defeat at Second Bull Run, uh, held a meeting with all of his corps commanders. And he had made the decision at that point that he was going to uh, pull back to the defenses around Washington uh, for the safety of his army. But he was getting orders from the new commander-in-chief, who was Henry Halleck, telling him that he needed to uh, re-engage the Confederate Army and press an attack at the Bull Run battlefield, which he really didn't want to do. I'm going to go ahead and uh, break off some skirmishers. I want to rush ahead and try to secure this area here. I want to hold the defenses in the trees. And then I'll put some artillery and probably a brigade or some skirmishers here in the open here. The main attack is going to come probably down here, but also an attack probably up here as well. So I want to rush to that area and hold those positions as quickly as I can. So we've already got some skirmishers here. We're also getting our reinforcements pretty quickly. So let me pause again real quick just so I can make sure everybody's moving. All right, so we're going to get early. And Bates... Now, you know what? Let's send spears over there. We'll send baits down. I'm just going to start sending them down this way, and then I'll uh, kind of organize once they get a little closer. Put these militia up here at the top. For now, at least, I'm going to hold my general and my, my supplies back. We'll get these other artillery units here in the center for now until I figure out where I want to put them. So he's got some skirmishers waiting for me in these woods. He's going to try to keep me from being able to take that position.
Bristow's gonna get hit in his flank. Yep. So he lost 31 men there, but I don't want them deterring him from being able to get down into those woods. He's starting to get his troops onto the field now. Alright, so anyway, um, so what happened at the Battle of Chantilly then was that while Pope was making his plans, unbeknownst to him, Stonewall Jackson was executing one of his many brilliant flanking maneuvers that he did during the war. Uh, in this case, the idea was to cut off the Union retreat back to the city of Washington. And so he goes around, I believe it was the right flank of the Union Army and surprises these two divisions under Philip Kearney and I think I want to say Jesse Reno was the other one. It was Isaac Stevens. And Isaac Stevens and Philip Kearney were both killed in this battle, uh, commanding their divisions. Philip Kearney in particular was very popular with his troops. We got to back the Hampton Legion up. They're going to get overwhelmed there. We got to get Spears over here to help them. And if I remember correctly, this battle, at least the second half of the battle, there was a pretty bad storm that hit. One of those good uh, late summer afternoon thunderstorms. So he's rushing up to try and hit me on the left side. Thankfully, I've got my artillery in place over here now. So this is definitely a very different strategy than the enemy normally has in this battle. Usually it hits me right here. I don't know what's out here. Okay, I knew there was another division over here somewhere. Jeez, he's rushing everybody up that way. So we're going to have to counter that. do the same. Just looking real quick at the numbers. Um, he started out with about a 900 man advantage on me. That's being cut down. We're almost at even odds now. I gotta get up here and cover these skirmishers so I can turn Hampton's Legion. these skirmishers are going to cover my flank, I can get Hampton's Legion up here and on Ferrero's flank. So the Union was outnumbered about 3 to 1 in this battle historically. I think it was like 20,000 for the Confederates, about 6,000 for the Union. The Union lost about 1,300 men, so it was a pretty significant chunk of the force engaged. The Confederates lost less than 1,000. He's rushing more troops up this way. So I'm going to rush in. I want to engage these skirmishers. I don't want them firing on Hampton's Legion. Because he's exhausted and it wouldn't take much to turn him. They're starting to rout some of these guys. He's largely leaving my right side alone. I 
Most of the action is up here on the left. Looking at the numbers, he's lost uh, 2,300. I've lost about 700 so far. So we're going to turn Spears now, get him into Morrison. Keep Hampton on Ferreira. Really, this is just a matter of holding position. He's not even attempting to hit me on the right. So I'm going to get out of here with relatively few casualties in those units. skirmishers. I don't want them getting into Hampton's flank. As long as he's piling up like this, he's not going to be able to concentrate his fire. I'm going to go ahead and run my supplies up just to make sure everybody stays in supply. Don't want to get into an ammunition issue on the side where all the firing is happening. He's keeping just enough down here to really kind of keep me honest and keep me from being able to do anything. I'm going to go ahead and merge the Snakefoot Brigade Skirmishers back with their parent unit. Let's go ahead and bring these Skirmishers up, see if we can get a couple shots into Nagel's flank. Three brigades firing on Nagel. Alright, we eliminated those skirmishers. They are a non-factor now. Hampton's Legion doing quite well for himself. Spears doing really well. Everybody is really. The skirmishers for Hampton's Legion also doing well. Early. I mean, every one of my units is having overwhelming success in this battle. Bristow's militia, about the only one that hasn't inflicted significantly more casualties than they've taken. We drove off Nagel. But I'm going to hold this position. I'm not going to flip around here. I don't want to press the attack. I'm, I'm having great success with what I'm doing. There's no point in changing anything or trying to get greedy. I think I will bring these Napoleons up. I should try to move up these artillery pieces that can do more damage if they're closer. So then, this was September 1st. It's only 16 days before the, the Battle of Antietam. Keeping everybody supplied, let's get up here and just continue to move these supplies so I can make sure that none of my units get into a situation where they're out. See, Hampton's let down to less than half. There's only an hour left in the battle, though, so I think they'll be okay. Looking at the numbers now, uh, he's lost a little over 4,000 men. I've lost about 1,000. I'll take 4 to 1 odds every single time. I get, I think, 4,900 troops as a reward for this battle. So I'll definitely uh, come out on the positive side, which I'm going to need because I'm going to need every troop I can put into field, uh, into the field for Antietam. That's going to be a tough, tough battle for me. And I'm sure I'm going to be heavily outnumbered. All 
Alright, let's see what these Napoleons can do. Gotta keep an eye and make sure that Leisure doesn't start firing into him. I don't want to start losing casualties. In fact, maybe I'll, I'll move Wilcox up a little bit. And Bates. See if we can get into the flanks of some of these units. Of course, Wilcox is facing off against a two-star brigade here, but we also have a bunch of artillery firing on leisure. He's still not pressing anything down here. Let's go ahead and bring Tyler skirmishers up. Bring Stewart around. Try and get into Nagel's flank and drive him off. Bye-bye, Nagel. Get up there and make sure Hampton, Hampton gets resupplied. These guys are getting low, but there's less than an hour left, so I'm not going to worry about that too much. Go ahead and speed things up a little bit here because there's not a lot happening. It's a relatively easy battle to win. You just got to make sure that you get this strong defensive position before he can get there. All right, we're going to pull these 12 pounders back. It's not worth losing men and that two star artillery brigade unnecessarily. Go ahead and put Hampton's Legion skirmishers. Oh, just got wiped out. I was trying to pull them off the line. I should have kept them facing forward and hit uh, hit the fallback button. Spears, almost 1,200 kills, 400 deaths. Good day for him. It's a one-star unit using Springfield 1842, so it's not like they're well-equipped or well-experienced. I'll have to get Hampton's Legion some better weapons so they can truly be an elite force for me. Leisure. Probably gonna run out of time to do this, but yeah, maybe not. I'm gonna see if I can run Tyler skirmishers in here and try to deal with these. Uh, I gotta be careful because Robinson's right there. I want to try and get a couple shots on the, this artillery. about wrapped up. It was never really a contest. It was really just a matter of holding my own. 
And, and this isn't one I'm going to continue to press. So I'm going to go ahead and end this battle right here. Okay, so, <clears throat> excuse me. You can see odds are basically almost even. He had a few more guns than me. But uh, 8,000 casualties for him, about 3,300 for me. And uh, it didn't do a lot as far as capturing guns. I grabbed some more 1855s. Those will come in handy. I've already got a couple units equipped with those. I uh, rescued some things as well. So, good day. Uh, two promotions, one to Major General. I've got a, an abundance of Major Generals right now. Uh, more than I probably need. But uh, the main thing here is that I've got 12,000 men in my force pool. I've got about, let's see, 21, 20, uh, 33. So it gets me up. I'm somewhere around 45,000 men total available to me. Uh, he's got over 100,000. Uh, I don't know what Antietam's going to look like. I'm just curious right now to see what he's got for that battle. 95,000 men. That is going to be a nightmare like you wouldn't believe. Because uh, at best, I'm probably, I mean, let's see. I've got 12,000 now. I've got 45,000 total if I get them all in the field. I'll gain another 5,000 for Weapons Factory. Eesh. What a mess. So Antietam's going to be tough. It's going to be real tough. Uh, just looking at Weapons Factory. Looks like I can take 12 brigades. I remember this one well. There's that high ground up here. Uh, it's definitely a tactical advantage for me. Uh, so I should be in pretty good shape. I'll drop maybe one of my batteries out on this one. But I'm going to outnumber him. I should be able to pretty much wipe out that army if I do things right. In the meantime, uh, I'm thinking medicine. Just thinking ahead to uh, the, the, the losses I'm going to suffer in some of these upcoming battles like Antietam. Uh, Stones River, Fredericksburg. So, uh, so there you have it. We'll uh, we'll get refit and ready to go into that battle. Um, I'll have to decide how I want to do this, but I'll go ahead and wrap this one up right there. As always, I welcome your input, your observations, your comments, your questions, your criticisms, any and all of those things. And we'll be back in another couple of days. We'll do Weapons Factory and then figure out how in the world I can survive the Battle of Antietam. So if you've got thoughts up front, go ahead and throw it at me now. Um, it's a battle I fought a few times before, but I don't think I will ever have been at a disadvantage like I will be this time around. So we'll see what we need to do to win that one. As always, thanks for watching. We'll see you again soon.